Today we're talking about extroversion versus introversion, not as stereotypes, but as two different ways the nervous system manages energy and safety. On my science map, some systems stabilize by moving outward through the ventral vagal to the mohawk of self-awareness, thereby becoming the social engagement system. And others stabilize by turning inward through the default mode network. Neither one is better. They're simply different survival strategies. For many extroverts, the body feels safest when energy moves outward. Connection, conversation, movement, shared emotion. On the map, that's the system shifting into the PCC and Prachyneus, which track what's happening around us and signal the hippocampus what matters. In trauma, it can become busyness, overfunctioning, and avoiding stillness. And in safety, it becomes play, connection, and energy that lifts the room rather than escaping pain. For many introverts, the body feels safest when energy turns inward. Solitude, reflection, quiet processing. On the map, that's the DMN, the part of the brain that quietly tells us a story about ourselves. And then it sends the strong emotion and meaning to the hippocampus to lock the story in as memory from the inside. In trauma, it can become withdrawal or disappearing into thoughts. And in safety, it becomes depth, creativity, and grounded one-on-one -on -one connection. Extroversion versus introversion isn't loud versus quiet. It's where the nervous system goes to recover after stress, outward into social engagement circuits, or inward into reflective meaning-making pathways. Trauma can turn both up too high. And healing isn't about choosing one side. It's about being able to move in both directions. Tomorrow, intuition versus sensing, in versus S. Two different ways the brain processes information, memory, and meaning, especially after trauma.